Hello, welcome to a new artist spotlight. This is the first part of the spotlight on Frank Brunner. Very underrated artist, uh, in my opinion, because I think he didn't work in comic books for very long. So his name uh, is not often mentioned. He's one of the great bronze artists for Marvel, but the f little amount of work that he did for Marvel in the 70s are really fantastic. And I can say for myself, I wish he did a lot more. His first published work for Marvel is actually an ink job that he did for the backup story in Silver Surfer issue 6, okay? And here is a double spread opening of the Watcher story drawn by Sid Shore Frankie Brunner. There you go. And let me tell you for his first job as an inker extremely well done, okay? And um, if you're not familiar with Frank and his style of um, penciling and inking, then you will see the progression through this series of video. I'm not sure how many I will be doing, at least two for sure. But, you know, one of the things I noticed right away is his... Um, attention to details in the folds of the clothing, okay? Because that's always uh, an earmark for a good artist or a good inker, in my opinion. And just look at this beautiful panel here with the, the details. You know, his lines were really tight and clean, you know? When, when I first looked at this the first time many years ago, the first... Um, thoughts on the inker because I didn't pay attention to who the inker was was not Frank because I was more familiar with Frank's later work in uh, Howard the Duck or Doctor Strange so my first reaction when I look at the clean lines like this is almost Dan Atkins like but at the same time there is um, a Tom Palmer-ish uh, sense of brush if you know what I mean but as you can see look at look at the, the inking here it's very clean okay very clean you know one thing about you know for me a good inker can enhance um, uh, the pencilers work but not overwhelm it okay I have said this in many other spotlights of other artists and as you can see beautiful simple image okay of just the pants but just the details see right there doesn't it give you that a tom palmer slash gene colon kind of uh, penciling and inking you know but when you see lines like this okay when you see lines like this it reminds me a lot of tom palmer so yeah the very first time that i flipped through this story many many years ago if you ask me who I thought the inker was, name like Dan Atkins and Tom Palmer would have been my first guesses, not Frank Brunner, okay? But it is him, his first inking job for Marvel. And you can see beautiful, clean, clean lines. See right there, look at that brushwork right there. even here, okay? Like I said, if you're familiar with Tom Palmer's work, you might agree with me. And that's his first work. And his second work, well, chronologically, he also did another uh, ink job with um, Marvel Premiere Issue 4, which I will show 
a few original page after but here is the gem for this video in my opinion creepy issue 39 that came out uh, let me see what year was this I believe this was 1971 you can see right there okay sure the date is May 1971 but I believe this was on the stand in March of 1971 okay so this came out well before his work with uh, Marvel premiere and Doctor Strange but take a look this is to me amazing work by Frank Brunner both in penciling and inking just look at the details look at this harvest of horror eyes have stared at this splash page many many times just look at the folds on the shirt look at the line works on the sleeve look at that you can just look at this picture this frame right here and understand how much work and detail went into it amazing okay look at that You know, you look at uh, this right here, have a little bit of a Bernie Wrightson kind of feel to it, right? But even more details than Bernie uh, and his style. Look at that. I can't say enough about how much I have stared at this story um, over the many years I had this magazine because it, it's just beautiful. Look at that. amazing it's a short story but I can't help but stare at the detail of his work look at that check this out check this out now compared to the inking okay from this you can see why I adore uh, Frank so much because you know he's when he ink sit sure you know he gave enough details there but at the same time not overwhelmed with with his own style here he's free to do whatever he wish right and you can see the quality is significantly different amazing simply amazing There's not one bad panels in this short story. Look at that. Already, right? Already at this point, you can say that he's a master of the brush. Master. Need I say more? Last page. Talking about ending the short story with a bang. Just take a look at this. I love this panel. Look at the eye, the reflection. Look at the, all the lines work. As with, as with many um, great artists, for me, seeing their work in black and white bring a much higher level of skills. Okay, it, it's, it's, I can't say enough about how you know, often when I look at a color comic book, somehow the details and the quality of the penciling and the inking get lost, but not here, not in black and white. 
it is here for us to enjoy. Frank, um, next assignment that's published with Marvel is this ink job on Marvel Premiere 4. And I was able to uh, pull up a few original piece of art from Heritage. This is courtesy of Heritage website database. And it is beautiful work. It's for it is his inking on Barry Windsor Smith penciling, as you can see. Um, you know, one other thing about you know good inker is that a good inker should enhance the penciler and not overwhelm the penciler's style. And you can see here, you can definitely tell it's Barry Windsor Smith, but the little things that um, the, the little touch that Frank added as far as the details on the, the folds of his uh, of the strange clothing and capes. It's beautiful. Look at that. Absolutely love this shot of Doctor Strange cape right here. You know, it's 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 a marvel to look at the original art in black and white. There were a couple of pages on Heritage and here's another page. Once again, you know, I'm sure I am a broken record when I talk about the details on the folds of clothing, but look at that. Beautiful. You know, it's, it's not an action filled page, but I can appreciate the details and the work that went into the penciling and the inking. Beautiful job right there, right? Reminiscent of something that, you know, Bernie Wrightson would ink. His style at this point is resemble a lot, in my opinion, uh, to Bernie Wrightson. Uh, and, and Tom Palmer, it's almost like a cross between Tom Palmer and Bernie Wrightson, if you uh, can imagine those two master inking anything. Um, before I end this video, let's jump to another beautiful piece. So after this, he went on and did two uh, short story, courtesy here, this one with a comic link, of complete nine page story um, of Chamber of Chills. He did this before he went on and worked on Doctor Strange and Howard the Duck, which I will feature in the second part of the author spotlight. But look at how his style evolved over a two year span, if you look back at the early part of this video with the creepy magazine, but just take a look. Uh, let me zoom in on that. Here we go. Look at this. I'm torn between the heavier uh, lines and the softer line of the creepy magazine. They're both beautiful. Uh, if I had to pick one, pick one style as my favorite, I would say the heavier lines that we see here. Okay, look at this. This is just beautiful work. I don't know about other people, but look at that. But for me, I wish Frank did more horror in black and white magazine like Creepy and Eerie because it is his style is perfectly suited for black and white magazines. Look at that. See, by this point, you know, compared to the previous work that I show you, I would say that it, it's not, it's no longer, you know, resemble Bernie Wrightson or Tom Palmer. Okay, by this point, I felt that he has come into his own style which is beautiful, I love it. It's distinct, it's unique, and it is all frank, okay, look at that. Beautiful work. Let's wrap this up with the remaining few pages of this masterpiece. Gorgeous, look at this, right? The details, the background, Okay, not enough 
has said and praised about the background work of many masters. Okay, just look at the staircase. Just look at the staircase. Okay, the line works. Beautiful. The stone. Look at that. Okay, it's not. Okay, background work is tedious work. Any artist will attest to that, right? It's a lot easier to draw, like to say this panel here, this action panel here with the character jamming uh, a tool into the stone wall. It's a lot easier to do this, to draw that, than this right here with the, the skull, the rat, the stone wall, all that. How about this one? Look at this. I love, love this panel right here. Look at this. Look at the, the outfit, the clown outfit on the skeleton remain. Absolutely beautiful, right? Look at that. Amazing. Anyhow, uh, I hope you enjoyed this first part of the spotlight on Frank Bruner and for sure come back for the second part one of these days not sure when uh, I will load the second part but that's it for now thanks for watching bye bye